New tonight, Donald Trump Jr. under oath, the former president's oldest son, testifying for about 90 minutes today in the Trump org fraud trial, denying any involvement in the preparation of his father's financial statements, including uh, after his father became president and he was appointed trustee of a revocable trust. Donald Jr. saying he left all of that to the accountants. He is the first of three Trump children scheduled to testify. He'll be back on the stand tomorrow. Former President Trump himself is still scheduled to take the stand on Monday. Eric Larson is out front now, the Bloomberg News or legal reporter who was in the courtroom. And Ryan Goodman, our out front legal analyst. All right, so Eric, you know, we've been talking to you throughout this trial. You were, you've been inside throughout. You were inside for all of it today. Um, we've got a courtroom sketch of him on the stand because you saw it from your own eyes. We just get these sketches, but there he is. Uh, according to the Washington Post, quote, um, he left the room for the afternoon break. Don Jr. paused to hover over the courtroom sketch artist's work, looking at her drawing of him. Uh, sounds like father, like son. But um, can, do you, can you tell me about that and what the mood was like when he was on that stand? Uh, well, when he was on the stand, he was actually he started out pretty jovial. He cracked a joke at the beginning when the judge, for a few minutes, had some uh, photographers and videographers come in to, for, to uh, take some shots. And he cracked a joke about how, oh, I should have put on my makeup this morning, and everyone kind of laughed. Um, he also cracked a few jokes on the witness stand. Uh, at one point, while he was speaking really quickly, the judge you know, asked him to slow down for the court reporter, and he joked about uh, how he had moved to Florida, but he still talks like a New Yorker, that sort of thing. Um, so he was pretty laid back, especially compared to sort of the demeanor of his father when, when he's been in court and, and speaking to reporters outside the courtroom and lashing out sort of at yeah, the very, very judge. angry. Right. And so there was none of that from, from Donald Trump. And he seemed prepared. He did seem prepared. He answered the questions real quickly. Uh, as uh, for the first hour or so, it was a lot of background about his his work at the Trump Organization and all of the projects that he's worked on. Um, toward the end, uh, he was asked more pointed questions about his role and these statements of financial condition, these allegedly inflated documents at the center of the case. And he got a, a little more animated at that point in denying any involvement in those documents. And, and again, Ryan, we should make the point here that this, this trial is not about guilt or innocence that's been determined by the judge. All parties had agreed to that being the way this works as opposed to a jury. So this is about damages and what liability the, the former president Trump Org may have in the, in, in the overstatement. But even if Don Jr. is telling the truth, and Eric says he made the argument, he doesn't know anything about who, you know, what the accountants did, uh, whether people inflated, uh, despite obviously his role up at the time uh, at the Trump org, that could still be a problem for him, right? It could be a problem for him in multiple ways. Um, it's helpful to him in some respect because it means that he wasn't necessarily involved in fraudulently misrepresenting the business records or something like that because he didn't know what was going on. Right. Wasn't him. At least that's what he says. That's right. Mm -hmm. But at the other hand, it also suggests that he's not really practicing due diligence. That's, in fact, part of the allegations in the um, attorney general's documents submitted to the court that he should have known, or he should have explored it. And he's signing the certification saying mm -hmm. it is according to uh, accounting standards. And now he's saying, I don't even know what those standards are. That's one of the problems. The other one is maybe the judge doesn't believe him. The, the judge might make a credibility determination, and that's important in terms of if the, the judge's final orders will be appealed and if he would be overturned. If he makes some of these based on factual determinations that he doesn't find some of the witnesses credible, that is very difficult to overturn him because he's the judge in the courtroom making that kind of determination, mm. and only he can really decide that. All right, so where do you think, Eric, he's going to be back tomorrow, right? This this almost had been delayed by a day, right? Because right. uh, Michael McCarty was ahead, that was going slow. Uh, so he's going to finish tomorrow. Where do you think he's the most vulnerable as the state continues questioning in the morning? Well, there are several parts of the complaint uh, that specify Donald Trump Jr.'s role in these statements of financial condition in terms of using them to give to banks like Deutsche Bank and verifying their accuracy uh, as he was handing them over under the terms of their loans uh, for hundreds and millions of dollars. Um, and on top of that, there is at least one example of Don Jr. and some of the others at Trump Org being alerted to the fact that uh, one, of their, one of the main assets, their Trump's uh, three-story penthouse at Trump Tower, the, the size of it and value is exaggerated by about three times to over $300 million. And, you know, Forbes magazine looked into it in 2015 or so yeah. and told them about it. And they sort of just said, ah, oh, well, and apparently just went ahead and submitted it to Deutsche yeah. Bank and Mazars anyway. Which, by the way, I mean, there's overstating and there's sort of, you know, there's poetic license in <laughs> real estate. $300 million for a penthouse uh, years ago, that, that's, that's not in that realm. No, it's not. It's an order of magnitude. You're good. <laughs> so out of it. So they're in deep trouble. Right. For it. No. All right. Thank you both very much. Thank I appreciate you. it.